What's up guys, many of you have asked me about an opening which would be aggressive but at the very same time solid and easy to learn and I'm happy to present just the opening like that for you today. We're gonna go over the four knights game which is known as a very traditional chess opening after pawn e4, pawn e5 and you can start with knight f3 attacking this pawn and after knight c6, knight c3 we just develop our knights first which gives the name of, to this opening, the four knights game and it is considered to be a bit drawish and dry chess opening but I've found a way to add some spice here so that it is actually a pretty dangerous opening weapon for you against any opponent. And here what we do is we play bishop to b5. And what it does, it creates already the first kind of threat of capturing this knight and potentially grabbing this pawn on a5. And in response to bishop b5, there are three common options of black which we're going to analyze today so that you are fully ready to start using this opening right after watching the video. In most cases, they go bishop c5, which is a very standard opening move for black, but in this case, we have a little nice tactics, which helps you to gain the advantage right away. Very often, they also go pawn a6, by analogy with the rue lapis, which leads to an extremely funny variation. I'll show you in a minute, you'll be amazed. And finally, sometimes they back down and just play some passive defensive moves, such as pawn to d6, and I'll show you how to crack black's defense in that case just as well. Okay, let's start off with the most common move, bishop to c5. Normally, in this case, why play some casual developing move, but in instead, I recommend that you pull off this nice tactical shot, knight takes e5. This is one of the most underrated chess opening tactics, and yet it is so common if you just are aware of it and, and know how to make use of it. So knight takes e5 can be extremely dangerous. What's the trick here? Well, at first, of course, it looks like you just blunder the knight, but in reality, after you play pawn to d4, you're gonna gain it back on the next move while saving a pretty nice attacking position. Again, in the vast majority of the cases, your opponents don't know how to handle that, they react poorly, and you win easily. Um, in this video, I'm just going to show you the main idea, the main line of this variation. And if you want to go deeper into this and know different what ifs, what if Black played some other move instead, I've recorded another video about that some time ago where I mo go more in depth about these tactics and how you can use it in different openings. Again, it's a very useful opening idea. I would definitely recommend that you check it out later. But for now, let's just stick to the main line. So after d4, your opponent notices that you're attacking these two pieces. And the solution for Black is a, actually a wrong one. Bishop takes d4. And after queen takes d4, it may not seem like anything um, extraordinary happened, and yet you already got a winning position, <laughs> to the surprise of your opponent. Uh, what's, the, what's the point here? Well, you just have way too many threats for black to handle. I mean, at first, your queen on d4 is very active, you're attacking this knight on e5. If knight ever moves, the other problem of black is that you can always push this pawn forward and chase the other knight away. You can also bring your bishop to g5, creating this annoying pin to the queen. And all in all, you have just this overwhelming attacking potential and black has really nothing to oppose. So for example, uh, the most common move of black here would be to defend their knight somehow. They can't play d6 because it's pinned down to the king, therefore they just play knight c6 attacking your queen. And here there's a solution for white is just to trade it off, bishop takes c6. Now they probably do not want to capture that way because then you take the queen on d8, forcing black's king to move, so they usually recapture that way. And here you already have a bunch of nice attacking options. e5 is good enough to win. Bishop g5 is even stronger, because now e5 will not only push the knight away, but will just win it possibly thanks to this pin. And really, black has no way out already. So you're going to play e5, or if not, you're going to castle and then break open the center with e5 and develop this crushing attack anyway. In most cases, black just castles, which allows you to play pawn e5 and actually to win this knight. Again, it can't move away because then they would lose the queen. They usually try this counter attack on the king side with h6 and just go back and then g5. So that way they try to save their knight. But although they indeed save their piece, it actually changed things from bad to worse because now you have this queen g4 and all of a sudden it's checkmate on the next move with queen to g7. So that's how you can defeat even experienced advanced level opponents in this seemingly drawish opening variation. And the following variation is just so funny and absurd that I'm gonna show you the database of games because otherwise you might not believe me. So here after bishop b5, we're going into the four knights game. Here as we discussed, the four most common moves of blacks are bishop to c5, pawn to d6 or pawn to a6. All got over 2 million games in each of these lines. So uh, we just covered bishop c5. How about pawn to a6? 
It is quite funny because plays, black plays this move by analogy with the Rue Lopez, but the position is different. We have our knights developed here, which makes a huge difference. So after pawn to a6, what we can do is instead of bishop a4, as white normally does in the Rue Lopez, you can just go ahead and take here. Just look at this, black usually recaptures, which makes sense. Now we grab this pawn on a5, and now black continues playing by analogy with the Rue Lopez. So they play this move queen to d4, which is the most common move, which is the top line, you know, attacking this knight on e5. And you go back knight of three, and here, just look at this. Well, as I said, this is completely absurd. The top choice of black, by far, the most common move is knight takes e4. And as you can see, the average rating of black players is over 1400, so they are not complete beginners. But the top choice of black by far is knight takes e4, which simply blunders the queen in one move. So that's how you win games so easily against 1400 rating opponents. And actually, in this position, there is no way out for black, really. Anyway, of course, black is not forced to blunder the queen in one move, but even if black moves the queen away, let's say queen to d8, anyway, white uh, snatched that pawn on e5, so white is a pawn up. In the future, white can easily push the pawn forward, d4, grab the center completely, and thanks to his material advantage and, uh, you know, better activity, better center, better everything, white has a much better game here. Of course, black doesn't have to play the most popular move and blunder their queen in one move. They may instead, you know, move the queen away. But anyway, white has a pawn up, white is, has a stronger center of control, white can push the, his own pawn to d4 then, and he's just having a much better game. By the way, let me take this opportunity to tell you one thing which I think could be extremely helpful for your chess progress. Because I see there is this misconception that people often believe that in order to get to an advanced level in chess, they just have to master pretty much everything about chess. But it's not true. As you look at this example, you can see that if you simply eliminate annoying blunders such as this one, as we saw in the database, it's common for 1400 rated players, you already improve your chess by a huge margin just by doing this one little thing, eliminating these kind of annoying blunders. Okay, so the difference between an advanced level player and a beginner to intermediate level player is not as huge as most players believe. And you may be a lot closer to your chess goals than you think. So if you're interested in that, I've created a course to break it down called Three Steps to 2000 ELO, where I show you exactly the way of how you can get yourself to that advanced level in chess. And if you're curious to know this, you can click the link below in the description and check it out. All right, now the third option we're going to cover in this video is the move pawn to d6, the third also very common move of black, just trying to solidify the center. In that case, you want to play pawn d4, challenging black center right away, threatening either pawn to e5 or pawn to d5. In both cases, black's knight can never move because it's pinned down to the king. Therefore, black will pretty much always capture here on d4. Now, right, recaptures, renewing a threat to this knight. Black goes bishop to d7, and here in most cases white just castles or plays some casual move, but there is a variation that gives you a lot better chances of winning. That is, taking on c6 to destroy black's pawn structure to double his pawns, and you will double black's pawns anyway, right? If he takes by the bishop, you can recapture with the knight. In most cases, they capture with their pawn right away, and here the key move is queen to f3, and now your queen is sitting in an ambush preparing for you to actually attack this weak pawn on c6, but black usually is unaware of it, and actually, even if black is aware, it's still pretty difficult for black to stop your attack, so that's why white success rate in this line is just crazy. In most cases, black goes bishop e7, just trying to make a normal developing move. And here after pawn to e5, we get to this pawn on c6. And along the way, of course, we attack this knight. So black captures here. Now we capture on c6, attacking the queen, attacking this bishop. Black usually takes, now queen takes c6. And at this point, black usually starts realizing that something is clearly wrong for them because that is a check to the king and they can't play the usual move queen to d7 because that would drop the queen the rook on a8 so that's not an option they don't want to move their king to f8 because then the king will stuck in the middle of the board and black would play without that rook on h8 the king will be deadly exposed so they usually go knight to d7 which is a fine option but then now this knight is pinned which is also annoying and you can play just bishop e3 getting ready to castle queenside which you do on the next move and as you castle queenside, you now pin this knight once again, but this time with a rook against the queen. And it's, again, really difficult for black to untangle his pieces. For example, bishop d6 is pretty much forced. Now you go knight b5, you just keep attacking along the d-file. Now we attack this bishop and it cannot move away because then it would expose that knight on d7. So we exert really strong pressure against all black's pieces along the d-file. Uh, usually, they'll play something like knight to b6, at least trying to move their knight away. And here, you can take this bishop on d6, that's good enough, you're gonna win a pawn on that way. 
Or if you want to play a more fancy move, you may also take here on c7, which leads to pretty much the same outcome. We're going to grab this bishop anyway. Thanks to this pin, black cannot move their bishop, so that they would have to take it with a queen. But then after rook takes d6, uh, we get our piece back, and so we also want a pawn, that c7 pawn along the way. And let's say after a queen takes and rook takes, now at the end of this force in line, you can see that uh, you're up a pawn in this endgame. You're also putting some pressure over here. Your rook is active. So basically your plan would be very simple. If possible, you're willing to trade off all the pieces and just to start pushing your pawns forward, promote a new queen, and you win. So it's a force in line, and it's a pretty simple win for white. As always, all the resources I've mentioned, as well as all the games we analyzed, will be in the description below the video if you have any questions. Don't forget to drop them in the comments below and I'll be sure to follow up. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell so that we can stay in touch. And I'll talk to you soon.